Hey friends, Matt aka Martin here and in this video I want to share with you five things that you probably didn't know about Ableton Live's saturated device, which is one of probably my most used devices and audio effects inside of Ableton Live. And in figuring out what to do with this video, I actually learned a few things as well. Now, this video is gonna get pretty audio nerdy. It's not necessarily a saturated tutorial, but instead I wanna get into the weeds and really figure out and decipher how this effect is working and how it's affecting our audio signal. So without any further ado, here are five things that you probably didn't know about Ableton Live's saturator device. So we're gonna start pretty basic here. And the first thing that you probably didn't know about Ableton Live Saturator is that all modes except for the Wave Shaper mode actually clip the signal. So let me show you what I mean by this. Okay, so here I have a drum break, which is currently peaking on its track at negative six dB. If I play this drum break and have a look at the track meter, you'll see that the peak level is showcasing at negative six dB maximum. In order to give ourselves a little bit more headroom on our master, I'm gonna pull down the track volume by six dB. So now our track is gonna be peaking at negative 12 dB. And here I've got an instance of Saturator loaded up onto this break track. Now Saturator comes with a few different curve types. If I look at this drop down menu here, we have analog clip, soft sign, medium curve, hard curve, sinoid fold, digital clip, and wave shaper. Now the first six of these all clip the signal, meaning that when the signal hits its maximum possible value, it won't be allowed to actually exceed that maximum possible value. To showcase this, let's increase the drive of the Saturator by 10 dB. So remembering that our peak level was negative six dB, if I've increased it by 10 dB, we should be pushing our signal to the point where it should be going over the maximum allowable limit. Now take a listen to this signal and of course you'll hear the saturation occurring but you'll see that our peak level on our break track is not going to exceed negative 6 dB which is where we've brought our track fader down to. So there on analog clip, our peak level is negative 6.09. If I change this to soft sign, you'll hear it gets a little bit louder, a little bit more saturated, but still doesn't exceed that negative 6 dB mark. Likewise, if we go to medium curve, hard curve, You'll see that hard curve overshoots a little bit from negative 6 dB, but it's super negligible. Sinoid fold. and digital clip. And in all these different modes, we can push the input drive as much as we want and never exceed that maximum level. So with this digital clip, I could just keep increasing the drive. And we're never gonna go over negative six decibels. Now, as mentioned, this does not hold true for the wave shaper mode, which will not clip the signal pretty much regardless of whatever effects you choose in the wave shaper mode. So do just bear that in mind if you're trying to use saturator as a clipper. Now, speaking of using saturator as a clipper, this is something that I know a lot of people, including myself, actually do. And in order to do this, I know that a lot of people use the soft clip inbuilt into the saturator. And this showcases that that soft clip isn't really necessary, except in a few cases that I'm about to show you now. So the second thing that you probably didn't know about Ableton Live Saturator is that the high quality mode will actually produce overshoots. What I mean by this is that if you set your saturator to high quality mode and you push the input drive enough, you will exceed the maximum output level of that saturator. You will be exceeding zero decibels. Let me show you what I mean. So for those of you who didn't know, if you right click on saturator's device title bar, there's an option right down the bottom for high quality mode. Now, this mode is used to reduce aliasing. Basically, it oversamples the device. And if you don't know what that means, it basically runs it at a higher sample rate in order to reduce excess distortion. That's kind of as far as I'm going to go with it. And I'm going to assume that if you are watching this video, you kind of know what aliasing is. But if you don't stick around because I'm going to do a little bit more of an explanation later on. But let's just assume that you kind of think this is going to be the best option. So I'm going to engage high quality mode here on this saturator and we're still on that drum break. And as we established before, as I increase the drive here, I'm on the analog clip mode, we should be clipping the signal and not allowing it to exceed that kind of maximum level. However, as I increase the drive here, take a look at the peak level meter on our break, which I'll just reset now.
We've actually exceeded that maximum level by over 3 dB. Granted, we're pushing the input drive quite substantially, but this is because of how the anti-aliasing in Saturator works. And this is regardless of any of the different modes. If we go to something like Digital Clip as an example, which is a little bit of a harder clipping, you'll see this still produces overshoots. If I turn off the high quality mode by right clicking on the device title bar, turning off high quality, resetting our peak meter, you'll see that now we do not have any overshoots. Our maximum peak level of this signal is now at negative 6 dB, which is the maximum kind of 0 dB mark, right? It's where our output of our track is set to and it's not being exceeded. So although high quality mode might seem like a good idea to reduce aliasing, it will not clip the signal, which means that you will potentially have to do some extra clipping after the fact or turn down the signal if that's what you're trying to use Saturator for. If you're not worried about how loud the signal is, go for it, turn on high quality mode, it will reduce anti-aliasing, but just be aware it's not clipping the signal. However, this leads nicely into our third point, which is talking about the soft clip section inside of Saturator, which is not affected by the high quality mode. So if we take a look at our saturator device, we'll see in the right hand section, this little output section, this button that allows us to turn either on or off a soft clip. And what this does is basically put another instance of saturator after the main saturator and it's set to analog clip and therefore it's clipping the signal and not allowing it to exceed that maximum level. However, in order to do this, it's not oversampling the signal even if we're set to high quality mode. To showcase that this works, let's set this back to digital clip. Let's set our drive to 20 decibels and now let's set our saturator to high quality mode once again. And let's take a look at our peak level meter to see where we're peaking at negative 2.7 decibels. And as I engage the soft clip, now take a look at that peak level. So we are now clipping the signal. However, it's again important to note that this soft clipping is not doing any anti-aliasing and is not affected by the high quality mode. So in order to demonstrate this a little bit clearer, I'm gonna switch over to this sine wave that I have here on this second track, which is a sine wave playing a 10 kilohertz tone. I'm going to reduce the level of this track by about 30 dB. And I'm going to open up the spectrum analyzer on this track so that we can see it a little bit clearer. As I play this sine wave, take a look at where it's appearing on the spectrum analyzer. You'll see there that is our sine wave peak. Ignore kind of all this low level stuff for the moment, just focus on this sine wave. Now here on this track, I also have this saturator, which is set to analog clip mode. I'm gonna change that to digital clip. And you'll notice if I right click that it is not set to high quality mode. As I start to increase the drive here, take a look at what happens to our signal in terms of the amount of frequencies being introduced. You'll see that when I reach a certain point, we get all of these crazy frequencies being introduced. And that is aliasing distortion. That is effectively the harmonics being introduced by this signal folding back down into the audible frequency spectrum. Typically, it's only really a problem on high frequency materials such as this, but you may want to avoid aliasing distortion in most cases or at least reduce it, which is why we have a high quality mode on saturator. So if I right click saturator, engage the high quality mode, now take a look at the reduced level of these peaks. If I disengage high quality mode, re-engage it, you'll see the level of those aliasing distortion peaks get reduced. However, now that we've engaged high quality mode, don't forget our peak level is over where we want it to be. You can see here our peak level is just over one dB higher than what it should be. So you might think, okay, let's engage our soft clip. Now take a look at the level of those frequencies being reintroduced by the aliasing distortion. I'll turn off the soft clip and I'll turn it back on. As you can see there, when we engage the soft clip on the output of the saturator, those frequencies introduced by that aliasing distortion got 
louder. Now, granted, this isn't really going to be an issue in nine out of 10 instances, but it is an important thing to note. So to recap, the soft clipping mode on Ableton Live Saturator is effectively like we're putting another saturator after our initial saturator, setting that second saturator to analog clip and not engaging the high quality mode. Because of this, it can introduce some more aliasing distortion, except remembering aliasing distortion isn't really that huge of an issue most of the time, unless you're really heavily distorting material or particularly high frequency material. But it is an important thing to know about how this device works. The final two things you probably didn't know about Ableton Live saturated device have to do with the color section. The first of which being that when you engage the color section, there is a really subtle noise floor actually introduced into the signal. So to show you what I mean here, let's go back to that same sine wave, except this time let's have it playing at two kilohertz instead of 10 kilohertz. And this is because what I wanna show you won't really work if we're playing a higher frequency. So let's play this sine wave and have a look at it on our spectrum analyzer. And as I go down to this saturator, you can see that we're not driving the input signal at all. And let's engage the color section of this saturator. And now with this color section engaged, take a look at the spectrum analyzer. You'll see this subtle noise floor actually introduced into the signal. Now I'm gonna talk about what the color section is used for in a little bit, but for the moment, let's take a listen to what this noise floor actually sounds like. And the way that we can do this is by grouping our saturator into an audio effect rack by pressing Command and G, opening up our chain list, right clicking, creating a new chain and inserting a utility onto this new chain and then inverting the polarity of both the left and the right speakers. And now what we'll hear output is just the difference between our saturated version and our unsaturated version of our sine wave. And because that's it, we're basically just getting the noise floor. Now, as we can see, if we look at the track meter, this noise floor is super quiet at negative 111 decibels. So it's really not gonna affect the signal that much unless you're super boosting it or distorting it after the fact. But to hear what this noise actually sounds like, let's increase the gain by about 90 dB with three different utilities, all at 30 decibels. Now, if I play this signal and increase the level of our track, that is the noise floor, minus that kind of sine wave, introduced by the color section of Ableton Live's saturator. Again, looking at the saturated device, we aren't doing anything to either the bass, frequency, width, or depth controls, but it is still introducing some subtle differences. The last thing is that the color section of Ableton Live Saturator will actually cause overshoots, meaning that the signal will exceed zero decibels if pushed too far, and if either increasing or decreasing the bass and or depth controls of this section. So going back to our drum break, I've clipped this drum break using the digital clip. The Saturator is not on high quality mode. I've increased the input gain by 10 decibels. This is what our drum break sounds like. And as I increase the color mode, don't forget we're slightly introducing some very, very, very low level noise floor. And you'll see that we're not exceeding that maximum level yet. We're still at negative six dB. Which goes to show just how insignificant that noise floor actually is. But as we start to change the bass control, take a look at our maximum peak level. And as I decrease it, you'll see that we have some pretty significant overshoots there. This also happens if I increase or decrease the depth control. And the reason that this is happening is because this color section is actually filtering the signal, passing it through that saturator and not saturating the other aspects of the signal that aren't being filtered. So then when everything is summed back together, we get this kind of combined saturated, unsaturated signal, which will then cause us to have overshoots in our summed version of the sound. You could of course mitigate this by engaging the soft clip on the saturator. And in fact, if you're playing around with the color section on Saturator, I highly encourage you to engage that soft clip because it's basically used for this exact 
purpose. And so there are five things you probably didn't know about Ableton Live's saturated device. I know that was pretty advanced. I hope you enjoyed me getting nerdy and a little bit deep and into the weeds of that device there. And if you'd like to get a little bit deeper into one more of Ableton Live's devices, you can check out this video here for a detailed look at Ableton Live's reverb. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something and I'll see you all in the next video.